three two one good day folks this is greg judy with my friends again this is uh wes and christina and uh we're here in virginia and i wanted to show get showcase uh the uh pigs and these are called idaho what these are idaho pasture pigs it's a uh it's a crossbreed between a cooney coon and a few other pigs and these have a little red waddle in them which is why we have the waddles on the bottom i was wondering look like little cigars hanging down yeah. there <laughs> Those are waddles. They're waddles. It's just a piece of cartilage that hangs off this breed. Look how short their no their nostrils are. They don't have a big long nose. No, sir. The the shorter the nostril on them, uh, the more preferred they are to this type of lifestyle because they're going to be grazing a lot lighter on your land. Um, they are super super grass heavy. Those actually choose grass before they choose feed. If uh, if we move them to a new pasture like what you're standing in right now. Well, Christina, you're petting that pig. <laughs> yes. They're really, they're really tame, then. They're they docile. Are. They're super sweet, and they love scratches. <laughs> they also think that we're bringing food. So. Okay, yeah, that might make a difference right there. It's an animal I'm, I'm comfortable having my kids around, which yeah. is a big, important thing, because some of the other pigs will get very, very big. Um, and they get aggressive, or they, they can will, get. They can yeah. get aggressive. These yeah. ones, um, butcher weight is 250 to 300, and after that, they can get the 600-pound sows, so they will be a little bit on the larger side. But um, we've let them stay in here a little too long, but we want them to tear this ground up because this is what's going to give us that, that seed bank to come back up the top. Okay. So we'll, we'll lightly come over here and put some hay in here. And uh, Well, you were just saying earlier this had pigs on it. This is where we had the pigs last year. Are you kidding me? No, sir. And they took it all the way to the dirt. We haven't put any more in. No more seed after we've had them in the dirt. This you didn't just, put any seed down or nothing? No. This is just <laughs> what was in the ground naturally. And Unbelievable. Over time, we've had all of this growth which has allowed us to now have to have sheep in the front yard <laughs> folks you've got some beautiful forage here oh my god that's sweet clover right there alfalfa you've got everything in here so the pigs did all that for you the pigs yeah. do a lot of our work for us <laughs> Now you got the chickens over here, and what do you got in front of the pigs on this drive? Uh, these are the Katahdin sheep. Um, they are typically one to two paddocks ahead because okay. they will, they're a little picky on the eating. Yep. Uh, not so much for the pigs. So we'll have them go in, they'll graze what they want to graze, and then we'll move them over to the next spot, and then the pigs will come over and clean it up. Mm -hmm. And then the chickens have free range over the whole area to keep the insects under control. And you've got netting as your perimeter fence here all yes, the way sir. around. We run the Premier One netting, and then we run the... Um, power flex nine strands oh you got the good stuff, the good stuff. <laughs> and we can have we've got the pigs trained to single strands and the top the bottoms for the pigs the top ones for the sheep and all i've got to do is unclip wherever i'm moving them to okay and let the animals go in and reclip them and that's it wow move every seven and you've days. got that down pretty darn good right there <laughs> Just that is around. awesome. That's Need awesome. To learn. A lot of escapes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I heard one squeal. I heard one squeal a while ago. He hit the wire. Um, yeah, they're beautiful pigs. Thank you. They're very sweet. Yeah, you got a little red one there. That that's is that an Idaho pig too? Uh, that's actually a Berkshire mix. That was one of our twos that escaped about four weeks ago, and that one, I kid you not, came back on its own when it realized there was food here and got stuck in one of my chicken tractors. Yep. My wife sent me a video from work. She goes, you wouldn't believe it. There's a pig in the front yard that's not ours. And sure enough, this and little one. It was one, ours. <laughs> it was yours. He came back after four weeks. Got under the electric yeah. netting, broke in, and hasn't left since. So she's kind uh, of he's, realized. I said she's happy to be home now. Yeah, and she's got a little bit of a more of a snoot, so all these deeper holes are actually because of that little pig. That little pig. Yep. She's a little more aggressive with the dirt than the uh than the ipps are i'll be darned but she gets along with them well yeah that's awesome win -win. she came back <laughs> well with this netting you've got around as your perimeter fence you don't have to worry about predators none at all right. um and we do have some small dogs and they keep other predators away just having the presence of the dog on the property that, that makes a difference doesn't it uh we haven't had any possums in probably two years no raccoons but uh the netting does its job um yeah yeah what are you keeping it hot with? What's your charger? Uh, we actually have it on the back side of the house. We okay. run an AC charger for it. Okay. We've got a, um, a six mile one, six mile, six and a half joule. So she's got plenty of pop. To plenty it. of pop for this. <laughs> yeah. Um, what would be your recommendation for somebody starting with a charger? Get a little one or a little you, bit bigger than you want? You always want to go bigger than what you want so you can grow into it. Um, we had one. We'd go to Tractor Supply and it was on sale and we bought it. And it was 150 <laughs> bucks. And I could sit there and hold that wire. So this ain't going to keep yeah. nobody in. And we have bears around here. So so we you got bears? We do. We do have bears. Black bears. Yep. I love bears. We've got a mom and four cubs on the property. No way. 
way. Back, and we'll see her every couple weeks, which That's is really cool. cool to see. She That's cool. She has two to four cubs every year. Wow. So it's fun awesome. seeing her. Awesome but then she also cool. knows that the pop is not. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> to, to be not Christina, good. have you ever been caught in the wire? Have you ever been popped? <laughs> oh, he turns on the wire as I'm changing it. Just to <laughs> I gotta keep her on the keep toes. Keep the spark in the relationship. <laughs> <laughs> well, I would say that would keep a spark in the relationship. Maybe not a good spark, but. <laughs> I get him back. Well, you got rabbit cages back here too, I see. Yes, sir. We did meat rabbits, and we'll go back to doing meat rabbits pretty often. Uh, we do California Rex rabbits. They give us roughly a three to four pound carcass of fresh rabbit meat. Um, and we've broken down the cost of those to be between $2.50 and $3 a pound, which is pretty affordable when other meats are 5 to $15. And you call them California what? California it's a California Rex. mix with a Rex. A mix with a Rex. So you'll see them at the... Uh, a lot of farm shows are the all white rabbits that have solid black ears and the little black nose. Okay. Those are the California Rexes, and they are a fantastic animal to raise for meat. Really? Yes, sir. How, what kind of carcass are you left with? Like a three to four pound, or at least, at least. A boiler. Yep. Yeah. And similarly, they call them just the same names as you do these. Um, they call them boilers at that point. And uh, how long does it take to get one to uh, size to less than eight weeks? Eight. eight weeks. Okay. Mm -hmm. And we'll give the mamas four or five weeks off to rest, recuperate, and then we we'll rebreed them. We don't like doing it during the summertime because heat and rabbits don't really get along yep. when they're caged. Yep. So you don't want to lose a mama. So we'll, we'll typically do rabbits again in, in late fall to early early winter. Okay, cool. And when we're not doing chickens in the tractors, we'll put them in here so they can have fresh grass too. Mm -hmm. Okay, gotcha. And we don't, well, and I'll show you some other parts here. We don't keep the pigs in here in the winter. We typically move them to the woods yep. and mm -hmm. let them do clearing yep. just to let the land give a full recovery. Well, let's go look at that. Absolutely. I, I wanted, I couldn't believe... Uh, you said that you only had them in here for three months. Three months. Uh, that's about, we didn't have a good frost this year, and it was a really wet year. We had early spring growth, which I'm very thankful for. Okay. Often to be able to walk on over and over. Okay. I'm not going to get shocked. There we go. And, and so uh, this is where you had them uh, for three months. Yes, sir. We'll, we'll fence off with the perimeter fence in the, in the woods area. Okay. Uh, still out front of my house. Yep. Mama loves that. And, yeah. <laughs> uh, and the pigs will get in here and they'll pick all the acorns off of these and they will fatten up. They'll actually gain weight in here more than they will on the pasture because of all the fruits and nuts on the ground. Wow. So, and the acorns marbleize the meat a little bit more and too. It does. Okay. The acorns, the acorns marbleize the meat. Mm -hmm. It'll add some fantastic fat into mm -hmm. them. Yeah. And we'll fence off not even a quarter acre and we can move the paddocks down so if you look behind it's a lot thicker they were not over there last year at all oh you can tell <laughs> yeah but they will they will tear it up and they love the shade and the cool ground in here so during the winter we just winterize them in the woods perfect habitat for pigs absolutely pigs don't sweat yeah and so the, the heat the heat will get them you know on a really hot day this yes, is sir. this is be a retreat for a pig right here well folks um, I just wanted to share with people your your pigs and your the chickens. You've got the sheep thing going on. You got the rabbit thing going on. Going on. It's a lot, and all this is is less than less than an acre. Um, we we calculated that to be less than a third of an acre where we run all those. And in the in this winter time, we rest them here. And this is only maybe a third of an acre. You're feeding your family on a third of an acre. On a third of an acre, yes, sir. That's that's fun. fantastic. <laughs> that must be a good feeling to go in the freezer and open that freezer and, and pull out a rabbit or a, or a piece of lamb chop or some pork or a chicken. Absolutely. Wow. That's cool. Abby, what's your, <laughs> Abigail, what's your favorite meat on the farm? Rabbit. rabbit that's right. <laughs> this is Abigail. How are you doing, Abigail? Oldest. The oldest. And you got three kids. Yes. Three. Their ages are? 11, 10, and 8. 11, 10, and 8. All young and all help with all the farm chores yep. up through the processing. They all yep. know what it's for, and, uh, and they wouldn't trade it. They don't want to go back to the city. Yeah. We threaten it when they don't listen. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. Well, folks, I'm going to get out of here. Thank you both uh, so much for uh, sharing your farm with us today. I appreciate you coming by, sir. Yeah, it's been a real pleasure. We're in central Virginia, by the way. I'm doing a school up by Virginia Tech on Friday, but... Had a little extra time and made it up this way, and I'm glad I did. So, all right. Well, you all have a great day, and everyone on the way out, hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you next time.